Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to scrape the weather data from Google using Python. This is going to be a beginner level tutorial. And at the end, I'm gonna explain to you why you might not wanna do it this way and you might wanna do something else. But for this case, let's get started. I'm going to be using request HTML for this. If you don't have it, you can pip install it. But I'm gonna do from requests underscore HTML import HTML session this is going to give us access to the session object which we can use to create our requests just note if you're pip installing this it is the dash not an underscore when you pip install but it's an underscore when you import it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our session so i'm just going to do s is equal to html session with the brackets on the end then we're going to set up our query string, which I'm going to leave blank for now, and our URL, which I'm also going to leave blank, which we'll fill in in just a minute. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct the request. So we're going to do r is equal to s.get because we are using the s, our session object here. Let's then give it the URL. And also we need to specify some headers. Now headers can be passed in like this directly with a dictionary or you could create a dictionary separately and then add it in the name of it in here. I'm only gonna be adding in one dictionary, one header, so I'm just gonna do it this way. And I, this is going to be the user agent like this. This is going to get us past the Google, um, are you a bot thing? So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna swap over to the browser and I'm just going to go ahead and search up here for my user agent. And let's grab this whole string and move back to our code and let's paste the whole thing in there that just needs tidying up and there we go now we're going to grab the url from the page or we're looking at so what we need is just the search bit as you'll see in more in just a second um, but we don't need the rest of the stuff around the url we just need this part here so up to the queue and then these are the search terms that we're going to be putting in but what we want to do is we want to put our query string into our URL. So I'm going to turn the whole of the URL into an F string, which is going to let us put whatever we have in here into our variable into this string here. So I'm going to get remove the word London and I'm going to make this our uh, curly brackets here and then put the word query in. So now when we run this, whatever word is in query gets put in here. So it's just a nice easy way to deal with putting different things into URLs. So now we want to actually think about uh, running this. So let's go ahead and just print out r.html.find and let's do the title and we will see if we get something back. I'm gonna put London back in the query for now. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get our element title down here. So it's important to note that when you're using request HTML and you use the HTML find, it's going to only return the element and then you can do something with that element. If you also notice it has these square brackets around it, that's because it always returns a list, even if there's only one element in there. So what you want to do is you want to do after your CSS selector, which is what this is, you just do first is equal to true. And that's going to stop us returning a list. We're just going to get the actual element that we wanted down here. Now we can do the dot text at the end. Now this time it's going to give us the text that is within that element. So we should see that appear right here. And this would be the title of the page. But we don't actually want the title, we want the actual weather data. So let's go back to the page and have a look at the actual elements and see which ones we want to get for what bits of information we are after. So what we've done is we've just basically gone and clicked on inspect and we can click on this little selector tool up here and then hover over the piece of information that we want. Now if you look here you'll see that these um, class names for the element tags have uh, are a bit odd now that's quite common I, I just to me without actually doing any more further further looking into it that might mean that these could be dynamic and these might change over time and that's going to lead into the conversation we're going to have once we've done this at the end but what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to grab the 17 from this element so what I'm going to start to look for is some of these class okay we have a class and we have this id as well so it's a span tag with this id here so i'm just going to grab that id i'm going to come back to our code and we're going to go and change this to span 
and then an ID is used with a hashtag and let's paste that in there. So now if I run this, we might get 17 back, or we might get something else. We do indeed get 17 back. So now we've got the actual number of the, um, the temperature. That's good. Let's go ahead and save this into a variable. So let's just call this temp like this. And then let's work on the rest of the information. The next thing that we want to look for is the unit of measurement here. So otherwise 17 watt, it could be, I don't know, 17 elephants warm. I don't know, without the unit, it's no use. Again, let's hover over it. And here we have this tag here. Now, this is interesting because we have this class of W-O-B-T. Now that I can see it will match all over the place because it has it everywhere. But what we can actually do is we can go and search for this tag here, this div tag, and then use that to find the span tag. There's two ways we can do that. So I'm just gonna copy the class of this div tag and come back to our code. So now I'm just gonna do print again and we'll do r.html.find because we wanna search for stuff. And it was a div tag and the class is with a dot and it has this. Now it has a space in it. You can generally get away with filling that space up with a dot. I'm gonna do first is equal to true again. And then I'm going to run this and hopefully we should have our element back. There we go, we do. Now we've got two options. This other element here that we were looking for has this span with a class here, but it's also the first span tag underneath this div tag. So what we can do is we can chain the two together. So I'm gonna copy the class here. And what we can do is if we just go here and put a space, then we're just going to search for something else that's underneath this div tag, which was our span with our class of that. So all we're saying, our selector is saying, find this and then find this that's underneath it. So if I run this again now, we should get our element. We do. We can see if I just move this up and out of the way from my head, which I can't. Thank you, VS Code. Anyway, it's the right element. Just believe me. And now we're gonna to go to dot text. That's annoying. And we'll run this again and you'll see we'll get the, the, the unit out there, the, the C. So, so far we've got the temperature and the unit, the unit of measurement, which is good. So that's two bits of data. I think we should get one more. So if we go here again, we can just see there's this partly cloudy bit, like a little description. And we have this here. Now again, this span ID is a bit too vague. I think we'd hit lots of lots of results if we search for that. Now you could index through it, but what we can do is we can actually search for this tag here and then we can chain the finds together. So this is a div class, so let's do that. So let's come here and do print r.html.find and this was a div of that. And again, first is equal to true. And what we can do is we can actually then do dot find again, and we can search for this tag, this span ID, which I've just deleted, this span ID within this div class tag. So it's gonna search for everything in here to this find this one. And this is quite a handy way to do things by chaining the finds together. And it was a span with an ID of that. And again, first is equal to true and dot text. I'm just going to make this all a bit smaller. It doesn't need to be this big. There we go. So now we've chained our find together. So if we print this, we should get that element. Partly cloudy. There we go. So this is now our description. And it's equal to that. So we've got our three bits of data. And we've also got our query up here. So let's change the query. Let's go Toronto. Toronto and run this and I didn't print anything out. So let's change that. Let's print out the query, the temp, the unit, and then the description. And now when we run this, we should get our information back. So we've got our Toronto 11 degrees and sunny. Let's try somewhere else. Let's give ourselves a space there. Let's try Miami, maybe somewhere a bit warmer would be nicer. What do you reckon? 30 degrees, 28 degrees. Lovely. I can tell you that's much nicer than it is in the UK at the moment, obviously. So now we've completed this. This is how to scrape the weather data from Google. This is nice and easy. But what I'm going to say, it's like I said at the beginning of the video, that if you actually wanted 
constant weather data for an application or something that you're trying to make that is for more than maybe just yourself, you're gonna to want to find yourself an actual weather API. There are loads out of there. Some of them, plenty that are free that you just need to sign up for that give you probably plenty of requests. Otherwise, things like this, whilst they work and they're good, they're good for learning, they're good for personal projects, but I wouldn't put anything like this uh, further out just because it's not, it's too dependent on anything that Google might change or anything like that. So definitely if you need data reliably, for an application that you're making or some other purpose, find yourself a good API. Otherwise, stuff like this is really useful. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, you're probably gonna like this video here, which is more web scraping.